What is NoSQL? The four best NoSQL databases explained. If you've ever studied Hamlet in high school, you might be familiar with his famous monologue. To SQL or NoSQL, that is the query. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous tables, or to take arms against the sea of unstructured data, and by using structured schema, define them? Okay, so we may have paraphrased Shakespeare's classic just a little, but you get the idea. But if you're thinking of embracing a document data model, what are the advantages? And what are the four best NoSQL databases available? Welcome to Kofi Group. We're the executive recruitment specialists dedicated to matching software developers and machine learning engineers. On a direct hire basis with VC-backed startups in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, New York, and Austin. Our videos cover hiring tips and strategies for startups, software engineering, data science, interview preparation, salary negotiation, remote work, recruitment tips, and much more. Subscribe now for the latest software engineering and machine learning insights, invaluable hiring tips, and the best career building advice on YouTube. Also, make sure you stick around to the end for some bonus info that you don't want to miss. Traditionally, the structured query language or SQL have been the most popular and common type of databases. They rose to popularity in the 70s at a time when storage was extremely expensive. But then again, so were computers. Software engineers needed a way to normalize their databases to reduce data duplication and more efficiently use what little storage they had. Eventually, technology outgrew the SQL database. A new type dubbed NoSQL was born. Now, this term has a double meaning, either non-SQL or not only SQL, subtly different. But either way, NoSQL databases store data in a format other than relational tables, so both terms fall under the same umbrella. The NoSQL database made an appearance as the cost of data storage per megabyte started to plummet. Technology was advancing, drives were increasing in capacity and also dropping in price. There was a shift. The primary cost of software development wasn't storage anymore. It was the developers themselves. This shift filtered down into the way databases work, going from being focused on reducing data duplication to a better model to optimize developer productivity, hence why it's used today. SQL versus NoSQL Just so you get an idea, there are five major differences between these two database setups that we need to address first before really sinking our teeth into the content. Number one, SQL is relational and provides access to data points that are related to each other, while NoSQL is non-relational, meaning it's more flexible and stores data in non-tabular form. Number two, SQL has a predefined schema which uses structure query language, where NoSQL uses dynamic schema for organizing their unstructured data. Number three, SQL is vertically scalable by adding more resources like a more powerful processor or additional memory. But NoSQL is designed to be horizontally scalable by adding more machines to the server group. Number four, SQL is rather archaic and table-based. While NoSQL can be document, key value, graph, or wide column oriented to store data. Number five, SQL is the better choice for multi-row transactions. But NoSQL is better for unstructured data such as documents or JavaScript object notation. Do you have any experience with NoSQL databases? Type NoSQL in the comments section below and tell us all about it. Why NoSQL? NoSQL databases address a number of challenges that face modern companies and how both their employees and their customers access data. More customers are going online, so databases have to support anywhere from thousands all the way up to millions of users concurrently. NoSQL does this with a smile maintaining high performance while ensuring access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As time goes on, the internet is connecting everything together in one giant web. NoSQL allows for continuous streams of real-time data to be broadcast from the servers. It also supports different data structures while supporting hardware and software updates that generate different data sets. We mentioned storage earlier. Well, big data is and will only get bigger. Horizontal scaling in the form of adding more machines to the pool is a relatively cheap way to ensure that as customer demand increases, the data stored and able to be accessed grows with it. 
The smaller infrastructure costs also translate into a faster time to market. The genie is out of the bottle. Everyone has a mobile device now. So a NoSQL database's ability to synchronize mobile data with remote databases in the form of cloud storage is invaluable. Everything is on the cloud now. But the benefit of NoSQL is that it can support multiple mobile platforms and OS with just the single backend. Super handy. The tail of the tape. So which NoSQL database reigns supreme? And how do our top four NoSQL choices measure up against each other in terms of their various advantages and drawbacks? Apache Cassandra, otherwise simply known as CastDB. Apache Cassandra was originally a Facebook-only product before being made open source in the late zeros. It has a proven track record as a NoSQL that is high performance, while at the same time being very fault tolerant. Failed node replacements are generally not enough to shut down the system as data is replicated across multiple nodes, sharing the workload. The database operates by making all nodes equal peers without any master-slave relationship. Horizontal scaling is a breeze as new machines can be added into the pool while running applications, meaning zero interruptions to the service. The cons with going the CastDB route is that excessive requests and data reads can really slow down the transaction time per user, and poor latency does creep into the system. It's a system built for fast writes, not fast reads. Due to the shared work between the nodes, data duplication can become a problem, one that is fixed by using a Java virtual machine within CastDB to deal with garbage collection. Apache HBase if you need to read and write huge chunks of data, then Apache HBase is the logical choice. HBase is also open source and tailor-made to manage billions of rows and columns by using sorting via commodity hardware clusters. It's based on the Big Table, a distributed storage system created specifically for structured data. Scalability, automatic sharding of tables, fairly powerful and speedy read and write capability and built-in support guarding against server failure are some of the biggest pluses with going with a system like this. The client interface is extremely simple and user-friendly and can be integrated with Hive to operate similar to a SQL, an option for database administrators who are more familiar with managing SQL-type queries. The negatives are no transaction support, no handling of joins to combine columns or more tables by using the common values between them, and no built-in security authentication. An annoying trait is that HBase is indexed and sorted only according to key, resulting in the database itself being extremely memory-hungry, and problems with troubleshooting any issues that arise. Are you interested in a career path focused in big data? Have you already started on your journey into NoSQL expertise? Type NoSQL in the comments section below and share. Also, keep watching to the end for some bonus content discussing NoSQL salary options. MongoDB Designed to be used in the cloud, MongoDB stores data in JavaScript object notation documents, making it far superior to traditional row and column type databases. It supports a large number of search methods including geographical, text, and graph, and also provides almost unrivaled security for the client by using firewalls, encryption, and secure sockets layer verification. Best of all, MongoDB can create visualizations to share data and connect to other SQL databases using the MySQL protocol. It's completely open source and free to use, and is so user-friendly that the system doesn't really need a database administrator, making it a great choice for businesses experiencing rapid growth or have a lot of unstructured data with no clear schema definitions. Think mobile app development, real-time analytics, and online content management systems. The downside is that over time, MongoDB will accumulate a larger data size physically on the drives. Although it's extremely powerful and quick-acting, it's comparatively slow when weighed up against other NoSQLs. Neo4j A little different from the others, Neo4j is a graph-based database that excels not only in handling data itself, but the relationship between groups of data. As soon as anything is stored, connections are made so that the next time it's accessed, the task is completed faster than arguably any other NoSQL database in existence. Each piece of data is cataloged with a cipher that provides direct pointers to every other data record it's connected with. 
It's this process that is the powerhouse of the database, making queries much faster and simpler to write than any other table-based system. No need to worry about joins. To boot, Neo4j also provides official drivers for common programming languages, like Java, .NET, JavaScript, Python, and Go. Neo4j hits a snag when it comes to horizontal scaling. As you can't shard, you have to have your whole dataset in just one server. The only way to scale is vertically by increasing processor power or adding memory, similar to monolithic architecture. There really is no clear winner here. One NoSQL isn't necessarily better than another NoSQL in all areas, and each database performs best in the field of expertise it was designed to operate in. Which of the four you choose? Apache Cassandra, Apache HBase, MongoDB, or Neo4j will ultimately come down to what your requirements are. Congratulations, you made it to our bonus content. Thanks for staying tuned in. As a special reward, we're going to share some valuable salary information about NoSQL. Looking for a career in big data management? NoSQL databases have matured and grown into such a wide array of frameworks that NoSQL is a feather that every tech professional has to have in their cap in order to get a look in on the more lucrative job roles and salaries. The average salary of a professional skilled in working with NoSQL databases is $117,982. Now, compare that to a software developer at $89,671. The healthcare services sector pays the highest average salary out of any industry, a very impressive $135,948. Information technology consulting is where your NoSQL experience is valued the least, with an average salary of $85,929. We hope you enjoyed What is NoSQL? The four best NoSQL databases explained. If you learned something from this video, please click that thumbs up button and let us know in the comments if there's any recruitment, technology, or startup specific content you want us to cover next. In our next video, 5 Pros and Cons of Apollo GraphQL, we dive into what GraphQL is and how it's made REST API look like old news. To be the first to see other amazing recruitments, employment, and startup strategy videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. At Kofi Group, we're the executive recruitment specialists dedicated to matching software developers and machine learning engineers on a direct hire basis with VC-backed startups in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, New York, and Austin. We help startups out-compete FANG, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, and Big Tech in the highly competitive war for talent. To benefit from a confidential conversation about your career and some of the best opportunities for software developers and startups, contact Kofi Group today.